back, everybody, to the Filmmakers Anonymous Show. This is our weekly podcast to discuss all things cinema. Mike Woodard here with you. I'm the club's president. And we have a very, very special episode today. Right now, we are joined by Kat Parker, who is our former president last year. Aloha. <laughs> a different language. <laughs> um, we're joined by Amber Fisher. Hi. <laughs> who is also a former president. And um, also one of the stars of the super awesome film show, which you can find on YouTube. Yep. And the other star of the show is Tom Kreft. Hello. It's superawesomefilmshow.com. Ah, there you go. Official website. I pay 10 bucks a year for that. We should, we should use that. Yeah, you should. <laughs> okay, so our club basically just watched three films uh, last week as part of our um, horror and Halloween month of screenings. And the last film that we wanted to talk about today... Um, that we watched on Friday was Cabin in the Woods because it's one of the most uh, unique horror films out there in the most recent years. Um, I thought it was a decent film. Um, it was pretty good, but I have some issues with it, <laughs> especially the ending. <laughs> you can go ahead, Kat. I see you shaking your head at me already. I thought it was awesome. It was definitely not what I expected, and that's a good thing. I got it... I. I went into it without uh, having seen any trailers or hearing pretty much anything about it. So me thinking that it was an actual horror movie and not realizing it was comedy was definitely a benefit because um, it took me by surprise and turned out to be very awesome. You can go, Amber. Yes. <laughs> I, whatever, everything that Kat said, I agree with. Except I did know, I did see trailers and... Uh, I knew that it was going to be uh, different, but again, I was surprised with basically the ending, mm -hmm. which was a pleasant surprise to me because I, I like watching horror movies, but uh, I don't like horror movies basically today because I don't find them interesting. They're all full of I remakes agree. or whatever. So something like this I really liked because it was uh, fresh and different and not the same old thing. And all the tropes of the horror genre, which I've seen so many times, were executed well. So mm. I liked it. <laughs> no, I thought it was a, an amazing movie too. It's just I saw one trailer for it and I just dismissed it as like it's another one of these things because I, I think the version I saw didn't really show much of the control room stuff that they happened to have in the in the show in the film. I mean, and they don't really talk about like what I thought were the best characters in the thing were the two technicians, Ken Jenkins and a <laughs> guy from the West Wing. I forget his name, but I thought that was the best part of the whole thing. Just, and they don't even mm. advertise that, so I think they lost. Part of the audience, at least at the beginning, but that at least word of mouth got around and it did end up having a good box office run. But yeah, it was definitely unexpected and I thought very good. <laughs> yeah, no, I loved those parts in the laboratory. Those were really the best parts of the film, pretty much for mm -hmm. me. Because other than that, it was just a standard horror film, the basic setup, which was the whole point of the plot, is to set up the standard horror film. My problem with the ending is just the fact that I thought they were going for something that was going to have like this clever like twist to it. Um, and it was clever just, you know, having a controlled environment, you know, mm -hmm. controlling the horror aspects of the story. But I thought they were gonna go somewhere with it other than just like the minute I saw the minute I saw the blood twist. Yeah, or yeah. something. Like there there was some other purpose to why they were running this laboratory. I just didn't like the whole result that it was because of a uh, ritual. I didn't like I sort of didn't like that and I just didn't like the fact that it just ended with oh by the way, now the world's over. I actually like, liked that they framed it as a ritual because then it's like this is the reason why all the other horror movies exist. They yeah. were yeah, for it this purpose. Pretty much everything because it showed the clips of like Berlin and like Amsterdam, which like they like referenced how like the hostile movies in Japan, where they referenced like the Ring movies and how those ones didn't work out. They they defeated the enemies there. So they did, the, the, the USA slasher flick has to work or else the world is over. <laughs> and I liked how they pitched it that way. Like every single mm -hmm. movie you've seen. It is all controlled by this one underground bunker that sends out like different demons they have locked in like temporal like cages. Also, I think it's it's also like I think it might be just like with viewer expectation that because we're so used to and like with the Saw movies things like that that you're always waiting for that big final twist at the very very end. But in this case, you get the the twist. You get it not at the very end, but maybe like at the a little bit after the halfway mark. Like, you get the twist right there. Like, you already know what it is from the beginning, but then the 
the big, big twist, which is the elevators and everything, which I guess we should say spoiler for everybody. <laughs> oh, spoilers, by the way, just, everybody. Just put that on the heading. But um, with the elevators and all the monsters, I think that's supposed to be the big final. That's that's the big twist. And I think that's maybe kind of a little out-of-sequence order with things because usually when you get the big twist, Shyamalan twist or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> It's always at the very end, and then everyone's like, "Oh, I get it." But and this one you didn't, which was nice. But this wasn't a twist. This this wasn't the Shyamalan twist. This was the Joss Whedon twist. This was the and Joss, and he gives you yeah. twists like every couple, like half, every couple of twenty minutes. Which right. But I liked this one because, like, okay, you think it's like first, like first twist, it's not a horror movie. Second twist, that one guy is not dead. Third twist, let's go underground. Fourth twist, let's release all the monsters. And fifth twist, let's end the, the world. Mm. <laughs> well, the yeah. end of the world though was kind of just. <laughs> You get you kind of get that. Well, either, well or the, or they could have killed the pot. They could have could have killed like. Yeah, I was expecting Frank that. Yeah. Got shot the, in the, big, the last and twist. final twist is Sigourney ended. Weaver coming out. That was twist, That's yes. the big final twist. Wait, Sigourney which by the way, she just sort of just appears out of nowhere. Doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> Sigourney Weaver. Demon. Oh, wasn't the demon thing. I guess she just is that her own room. She kind of walks. Right, out. right. But they don't show her like coming down the steps or coming up from somewhere. She just like appears because into she's the camera Sigourney frame. Sigourney Weaver. She can do that. <laughs> and we're just like, what? Has she just been hiding down here this whole time? Just. Yeah. Like chilling while everybody else does their She's lab work. She's got aliens. She can do whatever she wants. <laughs> Literally anything she wants. Yes. I, and see, and that's the thing when uh, when the option was there for the main character to kill Marty, mm-hmm. um, I like I thought she was actually going to do it. Or well, I'm not sure. You know what I was thinking at that moment when I was watching it, but I just thought that something like that was going to happen. Not just. I thought it was such a cleverly written situation, but they sort of backed themselves into a wall where they just kept going into a constantly, they just kept going farther and farther into a part of a story that they couldn't recover out of. You know, like they went so far with putting all these monsters in mm-hmm. and then, you know, the laboratory's being destroyed, all the characters pretty much dying at this rate, that I thought, I was expecting something clever to just sort of, maybe not bring it to a happy ending, but just... You, something you something that brought it out. Include like a typical harm. You were expecting somebody to come around and just take out all the demons. Oh, well, that the monsters. Well, or they would, that's figure, something they would like figure that. a way out of. Or it. figure right, figure a way out of the situation. You want to see Columbus Short just take a unicorn out, like. <laughs> <laughs> line up. But that, but that's the thing that I think that goes with the typical what you'd expect out of a movie. Like, if it was a regular horror movie, you probably would kind of expect that because you have to have some kind of weird ending like that where, oh, they find a way. But it's not. I think that's that's another thing, too. It's like, let's just fucking end it. You know what? If it's (laughs) it's going to come, let's go. Because you get all these other horror movies where the last person defeats Jason or Freddy or whatever thing it is, and then they make 300 sequels because they always come back. (laughs) <laughs> and this so one, this you can't John make a Reed sequel. Saying, like, no it just ends it. <laughs> yeah. That is a good point. I think it's, it's also because Joss Whedon, all of his movies, all the shows, he tries to kill off the entire cast. Last <laughs> time he finally did it. <laughs> that, and actually, it's kind of funny because when I did listen to a commentary, I think it was for Saw 3 or something like that, Daryl Lynn Bousman's philosophy was to just kill everybody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Saw three. We didn't kill everybody off in Saw three, four, and five over and over again because they're all like the same timeline. At the end of well, the right, episode. right. Oh, it's... we get shot again. Saw <laughs> dying again. The guy well, you see it again. That, over and that's over the again. Yeah. that's the point, and that's why those films just sort of went down. It's like, how long can you prolong? Jigsaw? But I think that's also <laughs> the point of this film too, is just to be like, this is one. This we're not going to be making a sequel. Right. You're not. No, we're not going to make this franchise. Two, three, we're just going. 3D. We're just doing well, they, it. They, you know. They could do a sequel. Which, or um, a prequel, or a, 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 whatever. Or prequel, a yeah. prequel would be they interesting do, like, to me. I can see them doing some kind of like seventies Texas Chainsaw thing, just set in the nineteen seventies. And see, that would be a interesting. A bunch of like nineteen seventies computer and technology, and, stuff. <laughs> and they'll have like Hellraiser in a box, and they'll have Jason in a box. Well, they did have. Mm-hmm. They did technically version, have yeah, Hellraiser. They, I mean, they had the. Um, yeah, it wouldn't be nearly as good as the first one, and there wouldn't be like, and if and if they get to the and if they get to like the underground layer, it'll just end with them like being shot in the head, and it'll carry on. I mean, right. the, and the thing is, Josh Whedon is so busy with the Avengers stuff that you can't yeah. ever get Which to is it. <laughs> well, and that there was a logical flaw with the film too that I found with why isn't the guard's one responsibility to just stand there right by that button no matter what. 
like 100% of the time. This, like, he went to go get his SWAT gear on. Okay? No, no, well, and when <laughs> I mean, we watch... Why, watch- why is there no guy by the purge button? Yeah. Well, right, and when we watched the movie um, this past weekend, I remembered, and we all saw that the guard initially tries to make them, you know, like, surrender, pretty mm-hmm. much. But then my thought is, why doesn't he just kill Marty? Because the girl was in front of him. He, well, not by that much. She, she wasn't covering him. Should they risk it though? Because if not, then the world will end. Yeah, if if she gets accidentally. <laughs> but but see, but but then the logical flaw with that is they walk out and then there's just a whole army of SWAT team just firing nilly willy at them. That that's my problem with it. They they what their tactics at the end of that during that sequence made no sense in my opinion. Well, I, think I don't get why he would stay near the booth because there's a button that just says. Per system well, purge that you can access just with three minutes. We were all busy so having that. We did it. We made it. We, the whole party thing. And so, like, they're all just, like, thinking. And so the fact that the guy is still up, up in the air, like, the guy's still up there, the pound head, and he kills, like, one of the uh, the dead guys. <laughs> oh, shit. We really messed up. And they all go into panic mode, run around. Like, the, all, the, the bomb techs couldn't blow the tunnel up. They're really slacking off this time. <laughs> like... I don't know. Like it's, there is a loophole there too in the film. Yes, and then, I, I don't. But it's, but it's okay because those loopholes together. push the rest of the plot together. Because if it wasn't there, we would just end the movie with them getting arrested and then killed. That would be a horrible ending. Oh, and well, yes, it would be. The guard comes down yeah. together. Bam. Well, well, okay, there's a box. There's a whole chamber full of monsters, and then shot in the head. Credits roll. Sigourney Weaver doesn't even have film. to come out. Yeah, yeah she doesn't even, you would never even know You she might was just in the hear film. her voice over the microphone, and people will be like, that person sounds familiar, and then it cuts to before we even know who it is. Yeah. Sigourney Weaver? She's running this laboratory? <laughs> Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> it's it's like we don't even know what her character name is. We You're just know that she's to. Sigourney Weaver, might and be, she's just in this film. Might just be Satan. <laughs> and then she has like this epic fight with Marty in the middle of. You know. Well, what what would she do? Why, why, <laughs> what what wouldn't she not? Why would but again, she not? but then again, what was she doing this whole time then? What was she doing this whole time that everything was going south? Well, she was the upper. The, the yeah, I got her as the management. I thought she got her. Upper management. Yeah, yeah. She's the just boss. the one making phone calls. Like it's not her job. I mean, like, yeah, but I, she's there though. If you're the upper management and something's going horribly wrong with your business, you're gonna put yourself on the floor. Other. Obviously, all <laughs> the elevators to come down were a little bit busy at the moment, yeah. so she probably had to walk her ass all the way down the floor. You're so. at the whole level of. Unexplainable cosmic magic in this show, in this movie. Yeah. About. It's like, oh, we have a bunch of people like ghosts in a box and stuff. So, I mean, it's not like, yeah, it's not conventional stuff. You just gotta, like, just sit back and, like, watch. You just have to happen. believe it. I just, you can't really I market think, a movie like that. Yeah, I think, you, well, right, I think they because... marketed, it, marketed it right because I think, like, how Cat perceived it, I think that's how you're supposed to see it. Mm-hmm. Other than, like, if Cat did see some stuff, like, if you did see, like, a trailer, like the first trailer I saw, like, it didn't really give anything away. I think after it came out, like they might have, other than it's like, you must see this horror movie, best horror. Right. Like, it so, kind of started yeah, giving stuff noticed, away. Like, when it actually came out on TV, I noticed more of the like, technician scenes with like Ken like, Yeah, old, they started getting. Band- and I think like the first like the teaser trailer. trailer was. And they and they and they do that a lot once a film does come out. And I know I said this in the previous podcast, but it's like when Spider Man Two came out, they released TV promos that showed him revealing himself as Spider-Man to Mary Jane. You know, well, there's, I mean, there's a lot of trailers that... But the thing with this movie is, is it was made, like, three years ago, and they just released it. It was, like, on the shelf for years. I was an MGM mm-hmm. problem, though. Yeah, and, but there's... And, but, and just, it, it kind of baffles me, like, other than, like, whatever money, or they just didn't know what to do with it because it's, it's different, so... But it made money... Like, it made so much mm-hmm. money... I mean, they could have even released it during yeah. Halloween. Yeah, but, yeah, but what it was was just, they, I think, like, uh, who released it? I forget. It wasn't MGM. Lionsgate. Lionsgate. It was Lionsgate. Yeah, because Lions- MGM, MGM was, like, going belly up. They had the script to Red, the Red Dawn remake, and they had Cabin in the Woods on the shelf just hanging out. Mm. So and probably, Red had, Dawn just coming out. Like, I'm pretty, so I'm pretty sure Lionsgate saw it, like, oh, that guy from Thor's in it. Throw it out. It's Joss Whedon. Awesome. <laughs> I think that's what happened with it. Yeah. yeah. But other than that, it was because I remember going to like a horror movie convention and mm-hmm. they were, and this was in like 08, 09, maybe. Mm-hmm. I forget when they filmed it, but it was like, it was like a good three years ago and they were giving out like free posters for Cabin in the Woods. And it's not even the poster that they had, they had with like the cabin spinning. It was something else. And I'm like, yeah, this is coming out in, um, like, in, 
in October or whatever like that. I forget yeah. when. And it didn't. And I was waiting because I was like, oh, cool, this looks really awesome. And then it never did. And I'm like, when is this Cabin in the Woods movie coming out? Because it was mm-hmm. supposed to be, it looked really awesome. I had no idea what it was going to be about. Shell. Shell. <laughs> Shell. Same with, and I think they did, like, what is it, like, uh, once they got Thor and they saw right. it with, you know, Chris Hemsworth, Chris Hemsworth out, getting, making, making money. money. You got Josh Whedon attached to it, though he was attached, he never was not attached to it. Mm. They decided to, and I think that's the same thing, or they could have probably possibly put it to DVD, but I think this was the, they made a good choice. Yeah, they, I, I think it definitely I think has. Another, another thing like that, um, one movie like release. two years ago with uh, Trick or Treat, that was an awesome movie. Mm. That was an anthology mm-hmm. movie. That should have been, um, I think that should have gone to the movies, but they put it on DVD and that sold like, so much, so many DVDs. Everybody thought it was great. Mm-hmm. But yeah, then that's what's uh, that's what precluded us to have this discussion about Kevin's Woods is that you know we're going through Halloween this year. I mean, are there any really significant Halloween films or horror films coming out besides I keep Sinister? Hearing Sinister is supposed to be really good. Is it? Is I it though? I mean, I, it's I so hard for me to trust horror films nowadays. No, I mean, I, I will get say the, the, the premise of it. The trailer but. definitely had some shots that made me like, oh, I just like my like childhood nightmares right there. Like, look at the way you see something like it's not jumping in your face, but it's, it's out like twenty five feet away staring at you. I'm like, oh, you mean the, <laughs> oh. the the boogeyman that looks like like. Uh, um, Band number from like Slipknot. Maybe I don't know, but it's just no, it's just kind of like just like it's like twenty five feet out the window. Staring, yeah, not moving, just staring at you. You look back, you look away, it's still there. It's like, oh. that's that's scarier to me than just like the jump out and scary. Like and then and it's in the distance, it's going like. Well, and that's better. And that's better because the more psychological yeah. throw. I mean, it, and Matt Dillon's in it. Matt Dillon. Matt Dillon. Matt Dillon is the you star mean no, Matt no, Dillon, no, no? It's Ethan Hawke. Who's Matt Dillon? No, it's Ethan Hawke. Whatever, you're the same. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at Dillon. I'm looking at Dillon. It's, it's, it's Ethan Hawke. They look at Dillon. <laughs> um, well, we're, Sinister looks interesting, but I'm not going to put my 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 hopes into it because I've said that about other things before, and then I'm mm. like, I predicted what was going to, and I don't like that. Yeah. Right. You know. Right. Oh yeah. I mean, all everything is kind of the same. You know. The same, no, it's scary, and we gotta get out of the house because there's a boogeyman in this, and we gotta figure what I gotta go talk to yeah. some guy it's... that's a professor that knows things about yeah. demony things, and he's gonna have to come in and help me. And somebody mm. might, but he'll but probably professor die. Gets halfway. Killed, yes. He gets killed, yeah. He dies halfway, <laughs> oh, no, of and then you have to totally read, lost in read through his journal of notes and mystical Scribble special and stuff. Thing. And then, oh, <laughs> poof, he's gone. Wait, no, he's not. Yeah, no, I like, the, I, like, I like the movies that just, the horror movies that just like. I think your expectations like it's about to happen and it does but wait this happens too or this happens instead of it mm-hmm. right so many movies horror movies don't do that like Kevin, Kevin Lewis kind of does that yeah. there's a few movies that I think back that was like like it was one really horrible movie horror movie a couple years ago and like it was a movie called Boogeyman oh yeah, yeah. Boogeyman and so like the movie was horrible it stars one of the guys from Boy Meets World. And, and yeah, it was a horror movie. <laughs> it was a horror movie. But the opening five minutes were like, okay, like the shadows come out. Like, oh, you know, whatever, right? And the dad comes in. There's nothing here. And then the dad gets like stuck in the closet and like bang left and right against the hinges and against the door frame. Like, what? <laughs> then, it, then it all sucked after that. But I mean, like, that was a really good jump scare for Boogie Man. Like, right. Like, top five from <laughs> after that. Well, other than that, after that, that was like, terrible. whatever. You know, one of the one of the worst examples that I saw recently was uh, I think it was called The Stepfather. That came out I think like. That's a remake. Too. And I think it is a remake, yeah, like but it, but remake. it's terrible. It, yeah. it, it, it's a, it's like the most awful thing. Like, um, you know, the whole thing starts off that he killed his family and then he moves on to this new family, What's and the, he's being he's being searched for, and he marries a woman and, and she has he's a like son. A weird serial killer. Killer. Right, yeah. and he's a weird serial killer. But here's a scene, and that I'm not kidding you guys is directly in the film is that their neighbor walks up to their front door and says you know I think your husband is on, was on America's Most Wanted the other night and then the next morning she, that same neighbor is going to pick up the paper the husband who overheard the conversation drives by and just stares at her Why as she as he's that? driving by I was like you're kidding right huh? you're Still kidding <laughs> and then and then like yeah, and then it just falls into all those horror cliches. Like the, like the the son and his girlfriend are basically always at the pool or in like some sort of swimsuit or <laughs> well, in some way, except for the ending scene where she's in a sweater mm-hmm. and he's you know it has his regular clothes on yeah. and they're being chased by the villain. But that's it's just, <laughs> but I mean that's like 
why I don't. That's why I don't like watching horror movies now because there's nothing different. There's right. nothing new. There's nothing, yeah. and and like I don't mind like if they do it well. Like I don't mind it not having like a happy ending. You know, I don't mind it going where everybody's dead. Yeah. The main character dies. Whatever. Like I don't <laughs> mind that as long as it's interesting and give me something fresh. Even if it's mm-hmm. half of the story is you know kind of cliched with every because every I mean there's not a lot you can do with the horror genre. Everything's probably yeah. been done. Virtually. Yeah. Virtually, More everything's been done. More horror movies to do, for this on the film, on the Super Rock Splitter Report, it's like, don't be afraid to kill off your main characters. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, True. I had, like, the biggest, longest rant about the crazy music about like, a few years ago with, like, Timothy Oliphant and Ronald Mitchell. The, like, the, the new one, right? The yeah. remake? Like, yeah, I saw like, that. Like, there's one scene <laughs> where, like, like, there's, like, a mo- mother and son have gone out of their mind, and, like, Timothy mm-hmm. Oliphant is, like, got shot in the hand, he's about to get taken out. But they're talking to us. I've been waiting for weeks to do this. Dude. While you're talking, you could kill him. <laughs> and it would be a great twist. I wouldn't have expected it. Like you started good, monologuing. Like, movies. <laughs> like, I think Children of Men killed off like main characters like every half an hour. What's going on? Right. Twenty eight weeks later, they kill off uh, Jerry Renner like half an hour of the movie. I'm like, oh, <laughs> well, he was the sniper from the what? Okay, he's dead now. It was great. Not mm. just fire. Well, yes. Fire. He was immolated. <laughs> he was. It was an awesome death. Yes. Yeah, he's like pushing, like a, saving him all a little wink and all of a sudden. Boom. It wasn't a. It wasn't a shitty death. No, he like, got It was a right. fucking awesome death, though. That you know? movie was so good, and it was yeah. so not well marketed. Yeah. Right. Like I mean, the the only real horror film I think I saw before Cabin in the Woods, and I'm um, not including all the Saw films because mm-hmm. I went to see all of them pretty know. much. Like I know, the Saw I know. Films, yeah. um, but was the movie Pulse, and that's another example of a movie that falls right into the horror cliches. Because well, it's, it's a remake too. It's like, uh, there we go. Yeah. I, I mean, it was it was going through that whole like few years where it was like let's mm-hmm. just copy off the Jap- right. Japanese horror. Right. Let's every yeah. every every mm-hmm. J horror. Let's do the Ring, which wasn't good. Let's do grudge. with the Grudge. Let's do what was the other one. There's a whole bunch. Pulse was one. Pulse. Right. I, and Pulse then even like the last three years ago, they were doing Tale of Two Sisters, which was, I think, The Uninvited oh, and it? whatever. Yeah. No. But, which I don't think j Har is really good anyway, but <laughs> Wasn't Green Sam Michelle Gellar's The Grudge? Yeah. It didn't, yeah, she it didn't make sense. <laughs> it was so freaking boring, and their horror, like, monsters are annoying as hell. Like, mm. it's just a Japanese person. That's basically what. No, I will say the. It's kid, just a creepy no, I will say Japanese girl. The small, hair. the small Japanese boy. boy going uh, was kind of weird. No, that was the. Ju- <laughs> that was the grudge. I from. thought he meowed like a cat, and then it was the woman on the floor that. Maybe it was a Japanese one then. But Again, one of the movies where the kid was just like he's in the sheet, he's in the sheet, and just goes uh, up at the girl. I'm like, oh, but how is that, that scary? Me. Because any of us could do yeah. that in a corner. And after like a few minutes, you'd be like, I'm going to kick you in the mouth. You Wait, shut <laughs> that's true. And then there, we saw, I'm I know, I watched it one time. Yeah, but, then, but then you have to wonder in context, would it be scary though? I think I, I might jump for a while. I might jump if it, it happened to me, but then I'd be like, why Why are you making that noise? I'd be like, oh, you scared me. And then be like, okay, you can cut it out now. No, seriously, you can stop. I need a lot of jobs. Seriously, I'm going to kick you in the mouth. I'm going to go put on some boots. And I'm going to come back here and I'm going to kick you in the mouth. Well, like, and getting to my point is that, like, Pulse was one of the examples of how, like, cliche that it had gotten where there was a scene, like, basically everybody is dying off at this point in the movie. From, like, some, like, internet virus. Well, it was through, like, uh, cell phone signals, any type of signal, a ghost would come through and apparently kill you for no reason, whatever, whatever at all. And um, there's a horrible scene. Now, this is after everybody has started noticing what's been happening. There's this one scene where the best friend of the main character is doing her laundry in the laundromat alone, mm-hmm. and the lights flash. You know, standard which means horror. Which means you're going to die. <laughs> exactly. No, but not only that. So the lights flash. She starts walking. She gets up. She starts walking away from her machine. The machine opens its door. And then it's closed, just starts spitting yeah. back out. And she knows that some creepy stuff has been going on already. Yeah. What does she do? She walks right up to it and looks right into the machine. And then, of course, there comes the monster. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's after, like... It was just after the part where, like, the flight swing, she's like, hello? Yes, ex- there? exactly. Hello? That's the worst cliche of them all. It is. <laughs> hello? It's always is hello? <laughs> hello? This door was unlocked. I'm just going to come inside and take a shower with the music on. <laughs> All right. Cool. I'm gonna get naked now for no reason. I'm right. not wearing a bra. 
<laughs> there, there was a ran- there was a random scene where the girl is in the tub in Pulse too. Like, there's <laughs> yeah. just always that cliche. But again, that's, was it Kristen Bell? That's the cliche. No. It was. <laughs> what? <laughs> That was, that was great. Uh, so then, so then, uh, where do you go from here then? If you like, you know, in the terms of creating better horror from this point on, like, what do you do? Because uh, you just said it's it's hard to figure out. Like, you know, it's hard to be original in horror nowadays. Well, I think you have to like look at like what. I mean, it's always after like you always get your stupid kind of like slasher movies. You always get that. Either they're going to add on to a sequel or just the franchise of what it is. Like like right now, it's the Paranormal Activity franchise. Before that, before Paranormal Activity, it was Saw. But when Paranormal Activity came around and Saw was on, it's like 200, you know, <laughs> no, Saw three, 3 d part yeah. two episode. Yeah, didn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> if you did Saw 3, do it in 3D. It just, you know, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> now you have Right now, it's Paranormal Activity, and it's getting on its fourth one, and it's anyway. Sponsored by Skype. Yeah. Um, so yeah. you just have to wait until something new happens. But the thing with at least those two franchises was at least the first movies were different, and maybe not Paranormal Activity because Paranormal Activity is kind of the weird stepchild offspring of Blair Witch, mm-hmm. but. Blair Witch was 10 years ago previous to it so it wasn't it was kind of refreshing to see something but when you see something like Saw Saw Mm. what I saw Saw in the movie the first one and I liked it and I still think the first one is the most interesting one if you haven't seen the rest of them because you did not expect any of that and I still do believe that that ending in Saw is one of the most like I was so surprised at the, I the ending I of Saw. Nobody mm-hmm. expected that to happen. And I'd seen mm-hmm. so many horror movies and figured, you know, I just figured the, the guy that was in there was the bad guy. Not really, right. it was kind of close, but not. But it, it was so interesting, mm-hmm. and then they kind of fucked up with it with adding and, on to it. And I won't go too far into it, but I mean, at least Saw 2 and 3 still kept like a basic idea still of the, the plot same be- universe, before but it that got first one, but you well, but you before expect it got convoluted. the plot of how it goes. But see, here here's the thing, it's like I always think that movies come down to characters. If you don't if you love the characters, you're going to love the film. Or at least that's how I view it. Mm-hmm. And I love Jigsaw as a character, especially in Saw 2 where half of the film was just talking to Jigsaw. That's all, like, Saul 2 was, was, um, uh, what's, Except what's his the name? the Pit of Needles. Well, <laughs> and the Pit of Needles. Needles, but and basically you air. got Jigsaw's backstory and his history, and, you know, you felt sympathy for his character. And that's what they don't do, and they didn't do in a lot of horror films. I mean, you could feel sympathy for, though, like, um, not all, like, that, like, horror movies, but, I mean, you can still feel sympathy for somebody, like, uh, Jason Voorhees in some way. Maybe not Jason Voorhees, but the very first Friday the 13th movie, if you haven't seen it, spoilers, Jason's <laughs> not even in it. The main the main bad guy or the killer in it is Jason's mother. And then if you kind of watch, like, pay attention to the movie, it, that movie is about a mother getting revenge, even though she's gone crazy, but she's gone crazy because her child, who I think is, has special needs, drowned because camp counselors didn't pay attention to him. And he drowned in a lake. So she go- went crazy because, and she was getting revenge on her son, that her poor son that died. They kind of went with the franchise and went crazy with it. <laughs> let's make him a big Lenny from Mike Let's Yeah, let's make him <laughs> When really in reality or whatever the story of Friday the 13th, at least that first story, he was technically a little kid that the lifeguards did, weren't paying attention to him whatever, having sex or whatever, you know, that Miss Voorhees was, nobody was paying attention, and the kid drowned, and she went crazy because it's her only son, whatever. Mm-hmm. Some people, if you pay attention to it, some parents can ju- somehow go in their mind and justify with that in some way of losing a child, even though you'd have to have a kid, even though it's you shouldn't go after teenagers and just mercifully <laughs> slaughter them to death for no reason, especially if they have nothing to do with your kid drowning. 20 years afterwards, but there is some sympathy with certain characters. Michael Myers, not really, he was a crazy kid who just murdered right. his sister. Right, but then but then to that point, though, Jigsaw was one of the most empathetic 
heroes because, or not heroes, villains because he so was suffering. Sociopath well, he was a sociopath, but he was, he was suffering from can, he was suffering from cancer that was inoperable. He lost his son. He, uh, well, I, I don't know the story with his wife. They sort of fumbled that up a little bit in the later films. So, but it's like you still felt really bad for that char- character, like to a level I beyond think for most a villains. Certain amount. But then you go, you're just fucking crazy. Like, well, and that's what you do with all these villains. But I think out of everything, his, his the reasoning behind what he was doing was a little bit more intricate and a little bit more uh, detailed and empathetic than but some the, other but, people. But like, sex, like, but, but like behind, behind any villain, no villain really re- thinks they're a villain. Well, so right, but the, but the example you just used, I mean, while, yes, you can feel empathetic yeah. for that character, it's also just another revenge plot. Yes. J- Jigsaw wasn't really seeking out revenge. I mean, he was a little bit, He was, but he had, like, a different type of motive for it, and the way that he presented his motives were different. The fact that, yeah, well, yes, every trap is completely messed up in every single way possible. You're, you're still going to be mentally fucked you're, up. You're, even you're still going to be messed it. up in some way, but he at least, he did provide everybody the opportunity to get out of the traps. What about the one trap? I think it was Saw 6 or 7. Oh, okay, but see, that's the thing. We can't get into Saw 6 or 7 because they screw up all the they screw maybe, up all that because it's not Jigsaw maybe. anymore. I know, but they still had somewhat elaborate traps. One of the traps, I think it was Saw 6 or 7, the guy was blindfolded, just around his neck, and he had to walk across like a maze of blanks. How is that like dangerous? If you're going to hump, you hump yourself. Oh, no! Is it like walking? And it's like, Wait, what, what trap was that? It was in six or seven, like, the guy's, like, has something around his neck, and he has to, like, walk to, like, across some planks of water, and he falls just off his bed. Is it really water, or is it really acid? No, it's not water. It's, like, it's like walking, and if you're going to fall to the floor below, and hang himself on the way down. But, but again, at, the, at that point in the series, Jigsaw has been dead Maybe. for a long time, and it's been, it's been his wife, and, you know, co- or and, and Detective Hoffman, yeah. and... You know, okay. and Amanda and everybody else that's been running his traps from that point on. I just watched Saw Three. Really that's trap. where I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel really like that's trap. good. I think I saw the first one. That's Which one had the guy from Lincoln Park? That's, that's six perfect. Or seven. Don't. Lincoln Park. That was seven. The guy glued to the oh, seat. Oh, that was the, that was like the last one. Yeah. He glued to the seat and he had his friend mm-hmm. under the car and his girlfriend in front of the car. So yep. if he gets up to stop at the car, crushes his one friend and like crushes his other friend and he flies through the window or whatever. Exactly. That was pretty cool. <laughs> it, it was I interesting. interesting I want to be an actor. I'll okay, go glue the seat. <laughs> That'll just make you scream the entire <laughs> time. It's like you gotta love the casting process of half these films. Like, so how well can you scream? Well, that's, that's with <laughs> yeah. any harm. Like, Did you ever see the movie yeah. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang? No, I haven't. It was I, the one scene where, like, he's like, you know, he's like one scene where like he's like in like the, the Hollywood party, or whatever. Like, what do you do? I'm an actress. Flashback to her thing. She's on top of an, he's on top of somebody having sex. Topless, bug comes in ah, and cuts her head off, flies out the window. I'm an actress. <laughs> Love it. That's like that's like half of the horror movie actresses. That's where you hardly see them afterwards. Only maybe one or two after they keep on coming back. Of course, there are a few ones who are like famous for being in horror movies. Yeah, but the, but usually the ones that are really famous for being in horror movies, I guess how they weren't that that horror movie type where it's scream and die it's usually like I outlasted a little Isn't bit. Isn't that how Jamie Lee Curtis kind of got famous though with the Halloween movies? Jamie Lee Curtis didn't die though. But she was famous for the Halloween movies. She was famous for him and then she came Isn't that also um, Jennifer Aniston? Jennifer, no, she was, oh no that was Scream wasn't it? Or was, wasn't it one no, of those? No that was Nev Campbell is famous for Nev Campbell is famous for, yeah, for Scream. Movies. Jamie Lee Curtis is famous for at least the first Two Halloween yeah. movies because the first two Halloween movies aren't bad. And even then, the who is the girl in the scary movie? The scary movie. The scary movie. movie. Who was, I forget her name now. Scary movie is a concept. I know, but That's the same, the same Ferris. concept. Anna Faris. Anna Faris. Got but she's from a, those movies. Yeah, though. and then um, I mean, you have like Sigourney Weaver, who is from the Alien movies, who they consider Scream Queen as well. Yeah. And, but it's just who you know. But the thing is, they're scream queens because they they survive, and yeah. there's some kind of significance where people you know they they survive. Well, because now you view that person as like the strong they're, character. They're they're an who icon. Made it so, at least like Sigourney Weaver is really an icon with the whole Alien movies because there wasn't really that many you know women and that survived or could like fight, especially a monster like that, and they, yeah. they didn't make it out that she was the main character. You thought she was just gonna survive, and this other guy who was the captain of the ship, you thought he was going to make it. 
<laughs> and he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't. And she lasted through like five movies. What are they gonna give LL Cool J his due as the great horror king? He survived. I that think shark. that. I think that would. Be, I thought he was gonna die. He survived the shark. I think that's that's something that that sh- that they should break in the horror movie mold where it's always like like the African American guy or girl or whatever. They always die. Oh yeah. That's always a big horror movie trope, and I think that should. There's be... a thing about it. Either the black guy either dies first or the most elaborately. Yeah. Like think back to any death scene of the black. They're guy. always going to die. First or most elaborate. And that's right. that's one where. And they're that's always going to. And they're they all... can change. They and could just make a horror movie and have mm-hmm. you know an African American whatever just survive. And they're and they're always going to be that character that you really liked. You know, who yeah. was like the funny guy. He was the. You know, hey guy, just relax. Or don't, Everything's or don't fine. Give, or don't give them the typical like. I mean, how do? I... Would we consider Resident Evil horror movies or not? I mean, they're like. Because there was the one guy from from our Resident Evil Two, and then he dies in the end of three. Yeah. Well, really so would, he survived. Say, he survives. Um, yeah. Prometheus, the captain of Prometheus. Idris Elba. He's uh, he was he was the most. Like, he didn't die first, but he died elaborately. He did die ah, elaborately. See, there you go. Yeah, There's but the he, rule. He, no, no, but he chose his death. He did choose. He chose well, his then, death, then, and he was going down, and he went, and he chose his death to try and save others. It wasn't like, oh, the ship's going out of control. We're going down. Boom. It was no. I'm. This is my. I'm going to do this. Then, in the same point, um, Saw films, the Lance Briggs officer character, he. Uh, he survived. He was in there from Saw two on till four, and he survived. He was the main character but of four. Danny and Glover, then Danny Glover number one. Oh right, that's right. I Danny Glover. Oh, I, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Danny Glover did survive, and he was. Ready he wasn't the first one who died that in that film, was he? Not ready to die. I guess, I guess somewhat complicated there because the it's way the that rule. they were fighting with the gun. First or most elaborately. <laughs> Yeah, so Prometheus true. kind of Resident Evil One, the black guy got little cues. <laughs> Kat, what do you think? You're not a really huge horror film fan, no, are you? I've only seen <clears throat> very few horror movies. I've seen parts of It, which terrified me as a kid. Uh, oh, finish it! But though oh, at God. the very end, it gets <laughs> I could take. Was, I was afraid of taking a shower for like weeks because of that scene where the guy gets killed in the shower. Yeah, but if you watch, if you watch <laughs> the ending, though, you go, "What the hell?" That's why I was so scared. <laughs> Curry, <laughs> cloud. Once That's you realize right. what it actually <laughs> is, you're like, "What the hell oh, are yeah. you? No, Shut up! Go away from me!" <laughs> I saw something uh, like a small clip of it on YouTube, like I don't know, last year or the year before. I'm just like, I was afraid of this, really. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but but then in that aspect, though, you liked Cabin in the Woods. I did. So what did Cabin in the Woods do that made you prefer it? I mean, maybe it maybe it's the obvious <laughs> answer that it's funny, yeah. but well, like, you see, I wasn't even going to see Cabin in the Woods because I'm so bad with horror movies and I get so scared from them. Just watch but, it in the daylight. Well, yeah. even so, I I get horrified, <laughs> but. <laughs> um, the Sunshine. only reason I saw it was because of Joss Whedon, because he co-wrote it. So yes. <laughs> that's. But then again, that goes back to the problem with the marketing. Like I wouldn't have seen it because I'm not a horror movie fan, except for that because I'm such a big fan of Joss Whedon. So for those people that aren't horror movie fans and don't know what it's about, that might like it more so than horror movie fans, and it's not marketed to them, yeah. it might be a problem. I, I think, think, I it's, think, all, I think yeah. it's the word of mouth is what helps. Yeah. Out with that. Right, because because uh, how do you how do you show more of a trailer and like you like we said they showed them the week after it came out and all that but how do you show a more revealing trailer without giving away the central I concept think it, oh, I think it stuff. was word of mouth because I would tell people I'm like um, I go, didn't see it till go I would be like go <laughs> go watch it and they'll be like well I don't like horror movies and I'd be like no you don't realize it's not a horror movie it's actually a comedy but just watch it because I was the film show, I'm just like, ah, oh, this looks stupid. And then you're like, no, go see it. I'm like, no. All right, fine. Yeah, because that was Shut my... Up, go see it. <laughs> that was my initial reaction, too, when I so saw stupid. the trailers. I was like, this is going to be the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And I didn't even see it in, like, when it came out. I saw it um, a few months ago first um, yeah. when I... Just over the summer with a friend of mine when it was at, the like, the $3 theaters. Yeah. You know, so it's like, and I just went just because I was like, oh, well, you know what? I haven't seen this guy in a long time. I'm, well, why not? I'll see, I'll see what all this is. And it was surprising, and I think I it's did enjoy those movie, laboratory no. parts. Like, no, anybody no. who, and that's the thing, is like, anybody, like, the people that think, like, oh, it wasn't that, it wasn't a good movie because it wasn't scary, then they don't get it. <laughs> right, they, they don't just, understand Even if you the tell them, like, <laughs> tell them, like, a thousand times, it's not supposed to be scary. It's, it's, a, it's a comedy. If you don't get it, either you just don't watch 
a lot of horror movies, which is fine. I think like people who don't like horror movies, like with cast, I think it's perfect for them. And it's also probably good, like, unless you're like scared of the win- like terrified of horror movies, like just like the opening credits of scare, like <laughs> anything. If anything freaks you out, then maybe it's not for you because if you get scared of it, then it's you just just go watch something else. If you have an issue with gore, if you have a, like a huge right. issue well, that, with gore, there wasn't gore, too much gore. Then. That's the thing. Yeah. But I'm saying there's some people that yeah, might there was, just be a little bit of blood, blood everywhere, but yeah. you can see like. Right, but that's horror. where the gore comes from. And that's, yeah. but that's the thing, you like, if, if there's people that are really, really super sensitive about it, even though this is very, like, light, I com- compared to something like Saw, you was know? Was it PG-13 or was it R? It was R, wasn't it? It would have had to have been R-rated. So. I, it can't, it can't yeah. possibly Dude, escape with a PG-13. Yeah. yeah. But I think it, it's for anybody. But just remember now, it's a comedy. If you don't get that it's a comedy it's a and that comedy. it's a dark comedy, very dark comedy, and that and that it's it's making fun of horror movies and the types of horror movies, like ev- you know everything, especially slasher movies or just like scary whatever, mm. then it's not for you and you don't get it. That's just <laughs> that's how I just tell people. If you just don't get, if you don't like it, then you don't get it. So I'd like to thank our two stars of the <laughs> Super Awesome Film Show. And now, I guess, technically, you're technically stars of our show, too. Yeah, I keep on calling. I've been here one time. I've only been here one time. I technically just I mean, show up on Monday. I'll come back for Joss Whedon. I'm a yeah. recurring yeah. character. No, I'll, come back, I'll come back for Joss Whedon, but yeah, I'm not I'm a star. No. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are all the stars. Oh, well, thank, thanks for deflating that notion, Tom. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to stop you guys. Today. I got my own show to run. If you, if you'd like to learn more about our show and more about our club ourself, you can find us on all the social media outlets on Facebook. Search UMBC's Filmmakers Anonymous on Twitter. Um, our u- username is at UMBCFA. And you can watch previous episodes of the show as well as other stuff on YouTube.com slash UMBCFA. So uh, thanks for joining us, everybody. Thank everybody here. Yeah. Yeah, rest in peace, Alpha.